All right, we are starting today with the uh, drawer fronts and the cabinet doors. So I used a regular tongue and groove bit in the router table to make all the joinery for the doors and drawer fronts. And that leaves a quarter inch wide groove. And the easiest thing to do is, because this is paint grade, just get some quarter inch MDF. Uh, I don't have access to that and can't find any locally. So instead I'm gonna go with half inch plywood uh, don't have access to half inch MDF either. Half inch plywood and I'll cut a rabbit all the way around the outside so that it sits flush in the groove but the back or the interior face of the doors will be nice and flush. The back of the drawer fronts will be nice and flush and that'll just make it easier to mount to the drawer boxes that are already built. A quick second to own up to my laziness. These are just some roller guides and on one side they have a roller right here that is grippy, kind of like a roller blade wheel. And it's off on an angle. It's not perfectly straight so that uh, when they are engaged, let's see, you put your material down, put this down uh, on top of the material, not the roller, just the black part on top of the uh, material. Tighten it down, tighten it down. And now they're perfectly set so that as you push material through, it's going to engage the roller and that roller is off on an angle, pushing the material up against the fence so it's nice and tight up against the fence. And they only roll in one direction, so you can't pull back and you're not going to get, you're going to greatly reduce the chance of kickback. I have these, I've had these for quite a while. I really, really like them. This is not an ad for Jessam, but why haven't I been using them? Well, because <laughs> I guess I'm lazy and failed to take, I don't know, what was that, 20 seconds to set these up? So anyway, thank you for calling me out of my laziness. I will use them this time. With a sacrificial fence on the table saw fence, I could bury the dado stack in the sacrificial piece so I don't have to worry about getting the dado stack to appropriate size. I can just position it left and right, and that left and right will determine the left and right or the width of my rabbit. And then, of course, the height of the dado stack determines how deep I'm going to cut. And once all that's dialed in with a test piece, I have a nice flat, even transition on the back side. And on the front side, we have this typical, you know, step down for like a shaker panel door. So I've got it dialed in, now I can run all of my pieces confidently. Because I'm using an engineered panel instead of a solid wood panel, I don't need to leave a gap for expansion and contraction. This also allows me to glue the entire panel in place, making the whole structure much more solid, much more well, solid, strong, glued together. And my biggest takeaway from, from doing all that, because I'm, I'm recording this part after I'm recording that part, is just how time consuming this is. I truly understand why most cabinet shops outsource their doors. Between all of the repetition with the, the machines milling the lumber, uh, the, the router table or shaper for the joinery, and then all of the repetition here at the assembly table to glue everything together, it's just time consuming. While the glue dries on all of that, I can start work on the legs. And I've got four larger glue ups here already done for the corners, and then three much smaller glue ups for the interior, uh, the interior legs, kind of like fake legs, false legs, just for decoration. Anyway, I can start at the jointer by milling these square four sides, and then I can cross cut them to their final length. And then, on the four corner pieces, I can go to the table saw and cut out a lot of waste material uh, for an interior rabbit. Here at the router table, I have a chamfer bit installed, and four and a half inches away from center, I have a start and stop location marked on the fence. The only thing that I've yet to determine is the actual height of the router bit, and that's going to determine the depth of the chamfer. I ran a test piece on the router table and most of the time you can get away with just using a, you know, a test piece to see how that edge profile is going to look. However, it's not doing me much good in this situation. The reason being is the legs, the corner legs anyway, are going to have three chamfers that are, are going to be really close to one another and they kind of have to interact. It's going to look goofy if they're too close together 
by having too large of chamfers, and it's, it's just gonna look odd if they're too small. So you gotta, I'm trying to dial in that exact height of the bit to determine that, and I, I need to do all three at once in order to actually see that. So the solution is to make these cuts on say six inches or so of all of these edges, look at it, and then make some adjustments there. I'm starting out really low, and once I get it figured out, then I'll lock the position and make the entire length cuts. I had a little boo-boo right here and I wanna talk about the fix. So this right here, this scar, is from the dust collection pulling the material into the fence faster than I had anticipated and uh, I gouged a little bit where I did not want it to gouge. So the solution to this, there's two different solutions. Uh, if this was a piece of furniture where you'd see the wood grain, I would opt for using a router bit to kind of cut a rabbit on both of these faces right here to completely eliminate this and probably extend it all the way into the chamfer over here. So I have a nice crisp corner, glue in a piece that's hopefully got a good grain match and then flush up this face with this face, flush up this with this. And then if the router table's still set up, uh, get this back to where it needs to be. That would be a really good solution if wood grain is necessary. Me seeing the wood grain is going to be necessary. This is a paint grade project, so I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm probably just going to fill this with Bondo. This will be put in the least, uh, least traffic corner, I guess you could say. And the reason I'm going to go with Bondo is because I also have some tear out right here anyway that needs to be touched up. So it is what it is. Uh, once I fill this in, it'll never be seen. However, I had a boo-boo, and that's one way to fix it. Well, two ways to fix it. The legs are supposed to be the same height as the cabinet. My floor is not level, so that's why we have some height discrepancies here. I'm gonna reference everything off of the top. But as the leg goes in place, I'm gonna use glue in the joint to secure it. And if I can get some clamps on it to hold it in place and isolate the movement, I'll prefer clamps. If not, I'll, I'll shoot some brad nails to the outside. The less holes, I have to patch the better. So hopefully I can avoid the brad nails. But once it is locked into position, I'll secure it with some screws through the corner of the cabinet. Now this is the actual inside corner of the cabinet. This is uh, the front panel and this is the side face frame. So somewhere right about here, I'll have a screw coming in at 45 degrees or so uh, to, to kind of get the meat of the leg right here. And I'll put probably three per corner leg to secure it. Here's a quick tip for you. Instead of buying brushes to spread out glue, cut up pieces of cardboard box. Just regular cardboard works really, really well for spreading glue around. Going back to the doors for just a second, it's time to mount the cup hinges. This is a cup hinge. This is the one that I'm gonna be using. It's a half inch overlay made by Blum and it is super easy to install. It's a soft close, relatively inexpensive and I've been using these for, I don't know, a decade now. All you need is one hole uh, to match this size right here. And I had a specific Forstner bit that was sized perfectly for these and I can't find it. Uh, I bring that up because that's the fastest route. Put a Forstner bit in the drill press and use a left and a right stop to knock out both positions really fast and have a depth stop on your drill press. That's the fastest way to uh, make the holes for these hinges. I can't find my Forstner bit, so I'm going to use the CNC machine. I just wanted to bring that up because this, the drill press is the faster method. My setup over here isn't quite as fast, but it is still pretty fast. First off, I have dogs located in my table that I cut on the machine, so I know the exact location of these corners. Remember, three points is all you need to form a corner. So these, these uh, six pieces over here, six dogs, uh, indicate these two corners that I'm going to use. I have some stops around the perimeter of each one of these panels so they can't wiggle around. I'm using a down cut bit so I don't need anything top down work holding. The down cut's gonna push the material down rather than an up cut trying to pull it up. So we're good to go with the setup here. But I don't want to create a new program for each size door. So I wanna go three inches away from each edge 
for the center of this cup, uh, cup hinge hole. And let's just say that this door is 15 inches. Well, the next one, if it's 17 inches, then that, that's gonna have to shift by two inches and I'll have to create a new program. That doesn't make any sense to do it that way. Instead, I have two different cuts that'll happen on the exact same program, and then we'll swap the doors around. So this, this one over here is gonna go three inches off of this edge to the left, three inches off of this edge to the right, and there you go. I'll be able to cut the top and the bottom, flip it, and cut a top and a bottom once again. And it doesn't matter how tall or how short the doors are, this setup will work on all of them. Flawless victory. Before installing the doors, I do want to hit all of the edges on my belt sander just to make sure that we're nice and square all the way around. And speaking of square, I have a miter gauge set and dialed in or calibrated so that everything that I put on here is going to be square so long as I rotate the fresh sanded edge or fresh sanded face up against the miter gauge as I rotate around the piece. Installing these doors is really, really simple. It's half inch overlay hinges, so just clamp a straight edge either half inch below the opening or half inch above the opening. Typically, I would clamp it to the bottom side. That way, you're kind of using gravity uh, in, in your favor. You're not working against gravity when you're positioning the door. However, the, the gap in between the top of the door and the bottom of the drawer front, I think that's going to be the focal point. It, you're really going to tell a difference if, if there's something out of whack a little bit. So I'm starting with the top as my reference point. Now all of these hinges are adjustable and I can tweak them after they're installed, but I think I'm going to be closer to the end result if I reference off of the top of the opening. With a spacer on top of the doors, the drawer fronts can be installed. And for these, I'm just using a couple screws from the inside. Eventually, I'll have some poles installed on all of these drawer fronts as well as the doors, but we are currently undecided on the top and we want the poles to match the top. So when the time comes, I'll add those as well. I think that's it for today and probably the last of the build videos for this. There's not much, not much left for me to do. Uh, I do have to install some feet, which I'll probably cover that when I do the finishing video. And I have to put another brace from this side over to this side to hold the sink. I'm leaving this empty space open on the bottom because I have to set this down on top of a bunch of pipes. And I may or may not put a floor in it eventually. Uh, I still have to add some trim around here. And this is just, it's going to mimic the doors. It's just 3 eighths of an inch by 2 or 3 inches wide. Uh, rails and styles to make it look like there's a panel in there and yeah this is nearing completion so i'll do i'll probably do the trim and the sink support off camera and then we'll pick back up with the leveling feet and then spraying this thing red let me see if i can find the finish uh, i got a bunch of finish for this already and that's what it is it's going to be tuscan red milk paint anyway hopefully you guys have been uh enjoying the series so far i'm taking my sweet time with it but i am also ready to get this out of my shop so uh, one more video in this base series and then we'll work on the top you guys take care have a great day and i'll talk to you in the next video